Hi everyone, welcome back to Science. I'm Miss Catherine and let's get started today with our Matter and Energy and Ecosystems Lesson 2.3. For today you will need a pen um, or a pencil to write with as well as some lined or blank paper to write on. And if you have access to Amplify Online, that would be great because we are going to investigate something in the sim today. Um, if you don't have access to Amplify Online, you can just follow along with me. And if you have a family member or a friend to talk to and share ideas, um, as always, that's encouraged. Or again, just talk to me. So if you're following along online, um, please pause the video and get to lesson 2.3 following our click path. And again, get your paper set up today with our headings for our unit and our lesson title. Great. So remember in chapter two, we are trying to uh, determine what caused the carbon dioxide in the air of the biodome to decrease. And we know from chapter one that the carbon dioxide in the air decreased because this lack of carbon dioxide is why our producers were not able to produce enough energy storage molecules that all of the living things in the biodome needed to survive. So for our warm up thinking today, we have been sent a graph um, from Dr. Corey, who's working with us and our Econauts around the population data of some different types of living things within our biodome. And so in a moment, I'm going to make this graph big on your screen. And when I do that, I would like you to pause the video, analyze the graph, and consider these three questions. What does the graph show? What do you notice? And explain how this graph could help us determine why the amount of carbon dioxide in the air of the biodome decreased. So when I was looking at this graph and considering those three questions, um, I am noticing first that the graph is showing biodome population data of three different types of living things within our biodome. It's the decomposers, the producers, and the consumers. And that this graph is showing the size of those populations over our time. And it's going from year zero to year three, because year three, again, is that year where the Econauts began to notice that the plants and the animals were not getting enough of those energy storage molecules. Oh, Margo's back today to say hi. And when I am looking at the graph, I notice um, that over time, the population of the decomposers is going down. It's decreasing. However, the populations of both the producers and the consumers is staying the same because that line is flat. It's not really changing very much. And when I consider how this information could be helpful in determining why the amount of carbon dioxide in the air of the biodome decreased, um, well, I know from last time that all three of these uh, components of our abiotic ecosystem, all three of those undergo the process of cellular respiration. And through that process of cellular respiration, we are adding carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So perhaps because these decomposers are reducing in numbers, it's decreasing over time, that could maybe be the link to why our carbon dioxide was also decreasing over time. This biodome population data graph is useful for us when we are considering why the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of the biodome decreased over time because all of these abiotic, all of these living components, decomposers, producers, consumers, all these living components of our biodome ecosystem all undergo the process of cellular respiration within their cells, and therefore they are all responsible for uh, releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 
So this idea is a pretty important one. Um, and I want you to go ahead and pause the video and record this key concept on your paper. So as organisms release energy during cellular respiration, carbon dioxide is produced from the carbon in energy storage molecules. And when I think about this term, energy storage molecules, it should make sense that the energy storage molecules release energy um, when they are broken down through this process of cellular respiration through that chemical reaction. Um, but as a result, I also get that output of carbon dioxide. And this process moves carbon from a biotic state in energy storage molecules to an abiotic state of matter within the carbon dioxide in the air. So remember our overall mission in the unit is to help our econauts build a better biodome. Um, and so to do that, we need to help them understand why this biodome ecosystem collapsed. And this reduction, um, this decrease in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is really important for them to understand because it's that uh, reduction, that decrease in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that caused our producers to not efficiently be able to conduct photosynthesis and therefore they did not produce enough energy storage molecules for the ecosystem as a whole. So our biodome um, needs to not have this reduction in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere um, if we want to make it work. Based off of the data that Dr. Corey sent us and that we looked at earlier, we noticed that the decomposer population was decreasing over time and the producers and the consumers were staying the same. So it's reasonable to claim here um, that the decrease in decomposers is what led to this decrease in carbon dioxide in the air. However, we wouldn't be very good scientists if we weren't checking uh, for evidence for our claims. Um, so we're not just going to conclude that that's the reason right now. We're going to double check by testing this claim um, about decomposers in the sim. And when you are ready, if you have access to the sim, you will pause the video and you will complete this sim mission to test the claim and make sure that you're recording your observations and that you're able to explain how those observations are evidence for or against the claim. If you don't have access to Amplify Online, um, you can join me right now as I test this claim in my SIM. Okay, so I have my SIM open here. Remember, I can get to this um, if I'm following along. Lesson 2.3, I'm now in Activity 3 here. I can find the link or I can use that shortcut. Um, so I'm just gonna hit play to start. Um, and I'm not gonna change anything yet because again, I wanna compare um, my data for carbon dioxide and cellular respiration um, over time for when I had decomposers because the biodome had some to start, but then um, the population decreased um, over time. So I'm gonna model that. I'm gonna mimic that here in my SIM setup. So I haven't changed anything yet. I'm gonna go ahead and just speed it up um, just to give it, um, you know, I'm impatient, just to give it a little bit more time. And then I'm gonna start to kill off um, these decomposers. And now I have my sim going so fast, so I'm gonna pause it. And then get all of these decomposers out of there. Gotta press that button over and over again here until they all disappear. Almost there, there we go. And I'm gonna play again. And I'm gonna go down to my graph, okay? And my graph's showing a lot of things. Again, there's where I was pressing that kill button. And I'm gonna turn off everything except carbon dioxide and cellular respiration. There you go. So if I go back um, to the very beginning before I killed anything, okay? I can see what my CO2 and what my cellular respiration levels and rates were. And then I started to press that kill button um, and kill off those decomposers. 
and I can observe a trend over time. And I'm gonna to continue to let this go for a few moments longer just to make sure that trend um, is happening and that nothing else changes. So I'm noticing a trend right now. Are you noticing one? Hopefully like me, you are seeing that when I compare where my cellular respiration rate is right now and I compare how many CO2 molecules we have in the atmosphere right now after our decomposers died off, way back to what it was before I killed off any of those decomposers, that the previous rate was higher than what it is now. So that means over time, my CO2 rate has decreased as the population of decomposers over time also decreased. Um, so that reduction there is some evidence that supports my claim because again, I saw a decrease in decomposers and I also saw a decrease in carbon dioxide and I did not have that decrease in carbon dioxide before I started killing off the decomposers. We now have all of the evidence that we need to answer this chapter two question. So when you are ready, I'd like you to pause the video and to write an explanation to the Econauts that supports the claim about what caused the carbon dioxide in the air to decrease and how this impacted the biodome overall. And as you do that, I'd like you to use our terms here in the word bank um, in your writing. So let's check our work. Are you able to circle or underline all of these terms in this word bank in your explanation? If you're not, pause the video again and revise your writing so that you can include all of these terms. Lastly, let's check that our explanation not only has all of the science terms that we need to accurately explain what caused the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to decrease, but let's also make sure that our explanation has the claim, evidence, and reasoning components that we know a good science argument needs. Um, so I have a couple of sentence starters here on the board, and I would like you to check your work and see if you mentioned um, some similar things. So did you start off with a claim around the cause of this carbon dioxide decrease and how that connects to a population um, of organisms within the biodome. Next, did you include evidence in your explanation from both that graph of Dr. Quarry's as well as our SIM investigation? And then lastly, have you clearly explained um, why this decrease in decomposers is important, how that connects to cellular respiration and carbon dioxide, and what that means overall for our ecosystem, and how that helps explain why our ecosystem collapsed. Again, if you're missing one of these pieces in your explanation, pause the video and go back and revise your work. Wow, we just figured out a really huge piece of our puzzle um, about why our biodome uh, didn't work for our Econauts and how they can make it better next time. Um, so as we reflect on chapter two, it would be great if you could share your explanation with someone else to show off how proud you are of yourself uh, for figuring out all of these really um, intricate connections between the components of our ecosystem. And if you want to spend some time reviewing what we figured out so far, or you'd like to give yourself an additional challenge and you have access to Amplify Online, go ahead and complete the critical juncture assessment in the next lesson, which is lesson 2.4.
as well as complete the um, review and extension activity that follows in lesson 2.5, where you're going to further investigate some of these claims that the Econauts have about their um, failed biodome experiment. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.